Hi guys, I'm very busy at the moment and don't have time for a deep diving video, so I thought I'd make a more simple one about something that bothers me. I guess you've heard that there's a new movie out, reawakening the allegations about Michael Jackson being a child molester and reigniting the argument around it. I am not going to get into this argument, but I do want to take a look at his love of Peter Pan, actually his identification with Peter Pan, and its relevance to the issue. What I'm going to say is kind of obvious, I think, which is why I was reluctant to make this video. But I see no one else on YouTube bringing it up, so I thought that it's about time someone added these two cents to the conversation. I wouldn't call myself a big Michael Jackson fan. I didn't read any of the books written about him, and I never inquired into the allegations against him. Recently, since the documentary came out, I've been exposed to both sides of the argument, and I have to say that the more I learn, the more skeptical I become of the allegations against Jackson. But I didn't go as deep into the evidence as many others have, so I don't feel qualified to tell you who I think is right. The evidence against Jackson consists mainly of testimonies given by some of the boys that he befriended, and you have to decide whether you believe them or not. Apart from that, it is just circumstantial evidence, having to do with Wacko Jacko's weird behavior, which many people think can only be explained by him being a predatory pedophile. This is where the Peter Pan myth plays a part, so taking a look at it can help make a more informed judgment. Now, no one can deny that Michael Jackson was weird. It kind of comes with the territory of being a mega pop star. It seems like a fabulous life, but these pop stars are actually very isolated from human society, and the constant adulation that they receive can mess with their head. Unless they are capable of completely distancing themselves from their persona, they tend to go weird. In the case of Jackson, it also seems to have exacerbated certain psychological problems that he had since childhood, and on top of that he also suffered from some physical ailments. All of this basically turned him into a freak show, and made it harder to regard him as a human being. One of his eccentricities was his identification with Peter Pan. Peter Pan, to me, um, represents something that's very special in my heart. You know, he represents youth, childhood, never growing up, magic, flying, everything I think that children and wonderment and magic, what it's all about. And to me, I just have never ever grown out of loving that or thinking that is very special. Do you identify with him? Totally. You don't want to grow up? No, I am Peter Pan. No, you're not. You're Michael Jackson. I'm Peter Pan, my heart. Peter Pan is known as the boy who didn't want to grow up. A lot of people understood Jackson's remark to mean that he doesn't want to grow up, and some think that this is why he surrounded himself with children. But that's not all that Peter Pan is about. Peter Pan, the character created in the early 1900s by J.M. Barry, is a boy who escaped home when he realized that he has to grow up and went to live with the fairies. As a result, he doesn't age at all and remains stuck in the same age. He maintains all of the characteristics of childhood, but there's a price to pay. He actually doesn't get to experience childhood, because growing up is part of what childhood is about. He doesn't know the love of a family doesn't know the joy of changing and growing and learning new things. He has no grasp of the passage of time, and can hardly remember any of his experiences. The fun and games of childhood, for the rest of us, are an important part of our developmental process. Peter experiences only the fun and games he has at the moment, but nothing more. His perpetual childhood is more of a curse than a blessing. He eventually finds his way to Neverland. Neverland is a magical island that is made up of the dreams of all the children in the world. It's a land of childhood, and Peter Pan is there to ensure that you have fun. While he doesn't get to remember any of it, for the other kids, his curse is a blessing. He sees to it that they get to have their fun and games. Some kids actually make their way to the island. They are kids who fall out of their prams, and then are not claimed by anyone. They are all boys, because, Peter explains, Girls are too smart to fall out of their prams. This seems to be a parable for the more individualistic nature of boys, which causes some of them to get lost. These lost boys are then adopted by Peter and get to be part of his gang, until they get too old and then he sends them to the world of adults. While in Neverland, the lost boys experience many adventures with Peter, but they don't get to experience the happiness of growing up in a family. 
It is well known that Michael Jackson had a childlike mentality. Again, I don't know enough about it to say what exactly it was, but the guy seemed like a little boy living in an adult man's body. This is why it took me a long time to warm up to his art. There was something very juvenile about his personality and his song lyrics. When he was young, his music had the vitality of youth, which matched those lyrics and produced pop masterpieces. But the older he got, the more vapid and off-putting it felt, and I was put off by it. I had to go back and listen to his earlier stuff, the stuff that was made before I started to consume music, to realize his greatness. Anyway, it seems like Michael's childishness wasn't much of a conscious choice. Like in the case of Peter Pan, it was partly conscious, but mostly a case of arrested psychological development, compounded by the isolation of superstardom. Like with Pan, it was more of a curse than a blessing. And I think that this is what he meant when they identified with him. And like Peter Pan, he wanted to turn his curse into a blessing for others. He used his fortune to create Neverland, a magical theme park for children, aimed specifically at lost boys. Actually, lost children, like the name of his 2001 track. Unlike Barry, he recognized that girls can get lost too. The park hosted mainly kids who were poor or sick, and gave joy to numerous kids over the years. Some people see this as evidence that Jackson was a predator, but you need to have a really dark mind to believe that. There is nothing weird about a man wanting to spend his fortune on helping children in need, especially when you consider how much he identified with the Peter Pan story. It is actually quite beautiful. What is weird is Jackson's relationship with some of these kids. He maintained very personal friendships with some boys, taking them around and inviting them for sleepovers in his mansion. Many of them fit the lost boy's profile of having problems which he tried to help them overcome. But if it was only about helping children, he could have done that without befriending them. I think Jackson felt a psychological need not just to help lost children, but also to be part of their life and experience them growing up like he never could, in the same way Peter Pan helped children experience their childhood in full. Anyway, it looked weird, and some of those boys later turned on him and accused him of molestation. And this is when the trouble began. We are talking about two boys during his lifetime, and two that now suddenly remember that he repeatedly molested them. If Michael was innocent, why did he expose himself to such allegations? Didn't he realize how weird his behavior was, and what it would inevitably lead to? Well, this is probably where his isolation comes in, clouding his judgment about the nature of society. But there's something more. We must remember that back in the 80s, when he started these relationships, there was very low awareness of pedophilia. For conservatives, pedophilia was just one of many sinful sexual behaviors, which were all wrong, while liberals were still in the attitude of the sexual revolution which maintained that there is nothing sinful about sexuality, and were therefore reluctant to discuss the negative sides of it. By the 90s, a consensus began to emerge that regarded anything as legitimate as long as it is done between consenting adults, and this is when the spotlight was increasingly turned towards pedophilia. By now, we have gone to the other extreme, in which we see a pedophile hiding in every pizza parlor. We have become extremely neurotic about it, and things that in the past were seen as perfectly innocent and normal, like a grown-up bouncing a kid in his lap, are now seen as signs of predatory intent. The world changed around Michael Jackson, and he did not adjust to the change. His public undoing came from an interview he gave Martin Bashir back in 2003. I have slept in a bed with many children. I sleep in a bed with all of them. When Macaulay Culkin were little, Kieran Culkin would sleep on this side, Macaulay Culkin's on this side, his sister's in there, we're all just jamming the bed. Then we'd wake up like dawn and go in the hot air balloon. You know, we would, we have the footage. We I have all that footage. But is uh, that right, Michael? It's very right. It's very loving. That's what the world needs now. More love. But is it really appropriate for a 44-year-old man to share a bedroom with a child who is not related to him at all? That's a beautiful thing. That's That's not a worrying thing? Why should it be worrying? Who's the criminal? Who's, who's Jack the Ripper in the room? <laughs> this is a guy trying to help heal a child. I'm sleeping in a sleeping bag on the floor. But when you say bed, you're thinking sexual. They make that sexual. It's not sexual. But we're going to sleep. I tuck them in. We put, I put a little like uh, music on. 
Now when I look at this, I immediately think of the Peter Pan story. What Peter and the Lost Boys crave the most is a mother who will tuck them in and tell them bedtime stories, and Peter fetches Wendy Darling to perform this function. Michael was basically recreating Peter Pan's cave, where the Lost Boys can sleep safe and snug, and he saw this as an expression of love. But people with minds more suspicious than mine freaked, and I understand why. Michael Jackson's public image was severely tarnished after that. If Jackson was innocent, why did he continue to have relationships with children, even after the legal problems began? Well, one reason could be what I conjectured before, that he had a psychological need to have lost boys around him that he could help. But note also that he said that he thinks everyone should do this. It seems that Michael thought that we are going in the wrong direction when we distance boys and adults from each other, and wanted to fight back because he thought it was a beautiful thing for them to mingle. Well, if that's what he believed, the world sure taught him a lesson. If you think that surrounding yourself with boys would lead to Neverland, you might find yourself smack in the middle of Lord of the Flies. You may be innocent, but not all boys are. He ended up with his name dragged through the mud. This, again, is predicated on the assumption that he was innocent. And here you have to decide. Some believe that he is a pedophile who built Neverland only to lure kids so he could have his way with them, and think that this is the only possible explanation. For them, this behavior is all the proof that they need for his guilt. I made this video to show that there's another way to explain his behavior. It could of course be both. Our sexual identity is independent of our other identities, and there have been many cases of people who led a sex life that contradicted their own values. They usually find a way to rationalize it to themselves. It is possible that Michael Jackson really cared for kids, and at the same time was sexually attracted to them, to the point where in some cases he molested them. Like I said, the more I look into it, the more skeptical I become of the allegations against him. But I will leave it to you to decide for yourselves. Anyway, that's all I had to say on the subject. Production of my usual stuff will resume shortly.